Welcome to another sparkling edition of Plank of the Week right here in Talk Radio TV Towers. We are here and we are ready and we've got lots of planks to talk about. I'm with Kevin O'Sullivan, a veteran of this very show, and Emma Webb, of course, who's been here many times as well. Uh, we've got so much to do, I think we should get on with it right now. Uh, Kevin, why don't you kick us off with your first plank of the week? Uh, I'm going to go for the Director General, the former Director General of the BBC, Tony Hall, uh, who at this moment, while we're recording plank, uh, is in Parliament uh, giving his testimony to a committee of MPs uh, about the appalling Martin Bashir saga, for which Tony Hall continues to make ludicrous excuses. Uh, This saga has become a massive embarrassment to the BBC uh, and they've just announced that they've marked their own homework generously uh, by holding an internal inquiry and they've cleared themselves, surprise, surprise, of in uh, in any way rehiring Martin Bashir in 2016 in order to cover up the Diana scandal. Now... The thing is, that's typical of the BBC. It's answering a question that nobody asked. Mm -hmm. Nobody suggested that you rehired Bashir in 2016, 21 years after that interview, to cover it up. I mean, he had plenty of time to do it in between, if you see what I mean. But also, they'd already admitted that he did all the things that he's accused of doing. Exactly right, exactly right. It's not much recovery. So they've tried to come up with, look, well, look, we've investigated, uh, and we're in the clear. Well, no, you're not. (laughs) Uh, and, And Tony Hall, basically when they rehired Bashir which is the real problem they've got right yes. now so they knew back in 1995 they mm. knew what he did particularly Tony Hall who was head of news yeah. he went on to become director general so when Bashir was bafflingly rehired in 2016 as religious editor of all things what a great idea uh, yeah. that was <laughs> what job should we give him oh god it, that's a it, mistake was it not also yeah. ethics yeah, yeah. apparently they hired him just because he knew some stuff about St Paul oh there yeah. you go yeah <laughs> Uh, so the, the big question documents. no the big question is why did you rehire him you knew the nefarious techniques he used to ensnare Diana into that interview and 21 years later you rehire him even though you knew that he faked those documents you knew he used underhand psychological techniques you knew everything that he did Tony Hall knew this uh, their story is oh well the news re- department rehired him and the director general didn't really know about it rubbish oh, yeah. Absolute rubbish. Isn't there some story doing the rounds that he actually recommended him and when he was asked effectively for a sort of verbal reference that he said he was a very reliable well, man? Well, that was, yeah, that was his original... His <laughs> very original, reliable at getting into His these. original investigation back in 1996 mm. when these allegations first uh, arose, uh, which found... Bashir guilty of forging documents. Uh, it was uh, although he's a, he's a, he, he's an honest and decent man, uh, and he's going to be forgiven because uh, we believe in giving people a second chance. And he's uh, he feels very bad about it, yeah. so uh, he's That's going to right stay then. here. So. Uh, the thing is, there's no way that somebody like Martin Bashir could have been rehired in 2016 uh, without the Director General, Tony Hall, knowing. There's no, no way whatsoever. <laughs> so, Well, you think somebody would have come to him and said, you remember that guy that did all the forging of those, mm. remember that big panorama thing? It was quite a big story. Yeah. So we're thinking of rehiring well, him. What look, do you think? Look, Mike, this, you know. is, this guy conducted the most iconic interview in television history, yeah. now, of course, much tainted. But it, at the time, it was the most explosive scoop, exclusive, that anyone had ever seen. Mm. It won the BBC BAFTAs, it won Bashir BAFTAs. And uh, so the idea that this guy, after 20 years in America, was coming back to his spiritual home, mm. uh, you know, and the Director General wouldn't know about it, is absolute mm. nonsense. Yeah. And there is Tony Hall sitting there, still making excuses for this. The BBC marking its own ho- homework generously, exonerating itself. When is this organisation going to face the facts and admit that this was the most amazing screw-up of all time mm. and that Bashir should never have been rehired? It needs to come out and say, I'm sorry, right from the start. Yeah. This has been one long procession of cock-ups and we humbly apologise for our abysmal mistakes. And while I'm on the racket, uh, Tony Hall was the worst director general in the history mm. of the BBC and that's saying something. And he's now quit his job running some gallery, right? Well, yeah, well, he, we went to the National Gallery and he had to step down because of the disgrace of the Bashir affair. Uh, so... 
uh, Tony Hall uh, made the amazing job of taking over the BBC when it was at its lowest point amid the uh, Jimmy Savile scandal uh, because his predecessor, George Entwistle, had been Director General for about 10 minutes and he had to resign because he tried to cover up Jimmy Savile. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's amazing so, that all so, these things... I mean, yeah. if there was any other media organisation, yeah. they'd be out of yeah. business mm. by so now. So Tony Hall... doesn't seem to be a bottom yeah. to no. the well. No, no exactly. So <laughs> Tony Hall is brought in at this very low moment and then look, absolutely no mean feat. You know, years later, steps down with the BBC in a worse state than when he took over <laughs> The man is a total disaster. Quite Goes brilliant. on to the National Gallery, has to quit because of the scandal well, of the BBC. Tony have, Hall, Pike of the Week every week. He may have won it already. Yeah. I'm surprised actually he didn't make it on last week. But yeah. He wasn't on it last week, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, what have you got for us, Emma, for your first one? Boris Johnson. Yeah, of course. So I could have nominated him for extending Freedom Day by yes. four weeks. Yep. Um, it's a good, re a good enough reason, yeah. yeah. But actually the reason why he's in here is because of something that he said at the G7 summit. Okay. Uh, when he was spewing out all of these garbled platitudes that mm. sounded like they were coming from his mouth but not from his brain yes. about building back freer yeah. and more equal Fairer. and then he gender said neutral gender and neutral and more feminine yes. both that? gender neutral and more feminine I mean you can't be both of those things <laughs> yeah. can you and what does it mean anyway he seems confused Build a, building back well, more I did say to but someone. it sounded as if he was like this sort of automaton that had just been plugged yeah. into somebody else's well, has, you know, and the is, connection was a bit shaky he's Harry kind of operating <laughs> him yeah, now you know, like a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy. <laughs> Just make sure you say... Gen you know what she said to him? She probably said, look, make sure, Boris, that you mention gender neutral and feminine when you make the speech. She wasn't expecting to put it in the to same sentence. Yeah. You know, she thought maybe two separate sentences, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know what he was playing at. I don't know what audience he thought he was playing to. But I was saying this today, that he's in his element when he's at that kind of thing, mm -hmm. isn't he? He's done interviews before where he talks about, you know, very intelligently about the use of language and so on. Mm. So he should know very well that spewing out these discombobulated yeah. buzzwords that make no sense joined <laughs> together like yeah. this <laughs> makes him it's sound like, like he word doesn't salad, know what he's it? talking it's about. It's really, you know, yeah. Mix it all up. Yeah, yeah. something in there neutral. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. feminine. Like feminine. <laughs> there's, there's, there's be more feminine, feminist, fe you know, whatever. It's very bizarre, isn't it? But he should also be, you mean, nominated definitely for this nonsense that he's doing this week in, in particular, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, let's not forget, they told people who had to come back early from their holidays in Portugal that that was to save June the 21st. Yeah. That was the reason. They said, we need to ensure something. that the domestic, um, you know, unlocking happens. Mm -hmm. And now it's not happening. So I have no faith on whatsoever. What, on what grounds will they ever think that it's justified to lift lockdown? Most people are past caring. Well, you know, they, 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 they really their are. Lives they actually they are. The last, and I'm going to move on to mine now because it sort of sachets through into it. Chris Whitty, he's literally a guy who doesn't see any good in anything. You know, I said to somebody the other day, he was just sitting on a train journey with this guy. He would just be li literally sitting there whispering in your ear. But that looks a bit but dangerous. Their narrative, no, that's a bit dangerous. Yeah, that looks a bit yeah. dangerous. But their narrative is finished. The their narrative is finished. It is purely to terrify us by saying hundreds will die every day. And we are now at the point that so, so be it. Just give us our yeah, but damn actually, lives but back. But actually, more uh, attention should be paid to these modelers as well. Because mm -hmm. the modelers that he uses have got it wrong again. Yeah, They've yeah. been saying yeah. that there should be 7,000 people currently in hospital. There's only 1,000. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. seven, a factor of seven fewer than they said it would be. Right? But what really puts him in the plank list for me today is not that press conference, although that was bad enough, but it was what was in the Telegraph today, which was his assertion that he now believes that children should be vaccinated. And the only way to save the world and to save the planet and to save us from going into yet another lockdown is for kids to get vaccinated. I think that's really insidious. I think it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think it's wrong. And I think it's not for government officials of any kind to start telling me or any other parent yeah. what you're going to do with your children. And it shows what they're actually chasing. They are chasing the mythical nirvana of zero COVID, yeah. aren't they? There's, well, something, it looks that way. there's something obscene about those. Sadiq, Sadiq Khan did the yeah. same thing today where he said, we have to have all of the young people vaccinated, otherwise we can't fully open up London. That's but rubbish. It, but it's coerced. Absolute they rubbish. say, oh, it's, a mandatory, it's, a, it's not a mandatory vaccination, but we are going to coerce you with the threat of depriving you of your civil liberties if you don't yeah. do what we tell you to do. And this is entirely their political decision. It's nothing to do mm. with medicine, nothing to do with um, uh, health. It's nothing to do with public mm -hmm. health. It is everything to do with them saying, oh, we can only do this if you agree to that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's nonsense, absolute rubbish, you know. And I think, it, and I think, it, and it, because people have been quite sort of um, willing to to go along with things, and because they've been quite willing um, to do what they've been asked to do, I think we have reached the point, as Kevin said, um, 
that people are just going to start to say, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. And I don't mm. think if we don't start saying no, mm-hmm. you know, you never know where this is going to end. You know, yeah. what it's are you going to do next? You're going to say, right, OK, you've, you've had your children vaccinated. You know, now you're going to get uh, another vaccination next year in order to get a booster. Mm. Or, you know, uh, we still don't really know for sure whether there might be another variant coming or there might be another, you know, disease coming that you're going to have to be vaccinated against. Mm-hmm. Or else, you know, they're creating a, a sort of a narrative here where we have lost total control mm. of our own mm-hmm. lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so unhealthy. It's yeah. almost like a kind of, you can imagine somebody who is, you know, has some kind of, or, or almost is psychologically disturbed, being mm. so obsessed with zero COVID. Every single person right. in the world must be vaccinated. Mm. Well, you can't vaccinate every single person no. in the world without undermining bo- bodily autonomy. People should have a choice whether or not they want well, to be also, vaccinated. Well, also, it's a ridiculous idea. I mean, you just simply cannot do it. I mean, if you're going to go to places like China, uh, you're going to go to places like India, you know, you don't even know how many people live mm-hmm. in India. How are you going to vaccinate everybody? You have no idea how to, how to do that. And it's all just more kind of, you know, um, virtue guys, signaling and posturing yeah. and trying to look good. These guys, these guys, uh, I mean, it's definitely uh, some of them, it, they just, they enjoy playing pandemic because mm-hmm. it puts them in a position of power. Yeah. It gets them on the telly. Uh, people are listening to them. Uh, I think millions and millions of people in this country, we're sick of playing pandemic. Mm. We want to get back to exactly. normal. I That's don't know. certainly how it had seems when you I see mean, I think I don't know about you guys, but I think next Monday is going to be very interesting mm-hmm. indeed because people are going to be like they were yesterday out on the streets probably demonstrating Mm -hmm. but i mean i worry that it could turn pretty nasty and pretty ugly because you know there are two groups of people in this country now the ones who think never mind we're just going to do what we want and the ones who Mm -hmm. want to stop them doing what Mm -hmm. they want or is going to have a big compliance problem? Yeah. Well, the, the, the news last week that 80% of peop- of adults in England have antibodies, mm. and that includes people under 35 who are not vaccinated. Right. Um, you know, p- even people who have been compliant and have been pro all of the different public health yeah. policies will see that and think, hang on a minute, this doesn't make any sense because people have invested huge amounts of money in getting their businesses ready mm. to open on June the 21st. Those are you know, all pl- places like nightclubs, theatres, yeah. that will literally go bust yeah, because they've invested all their mm. money in being ready for that one deadline yeah. just for the goalpost to be shifted again. I think that that, that is what will turn public opinion. Yeah. I don't think people will Because there's only so forever. many times you can tell people, oh, it's going to be all right in a couple of weeks. I mean, mm-hmm. they've been doing it now for, what, nearly 18 months. I just don't think they're going to get away it's with cool. it. It's awful. Kevin, here's your next one. Uh, I'm going to go for the England, uh, the woke England football manager, Gareth oh, yes. Southgate, whose addiction to uh, footballers groveling to Black Lives Matter is inexplicable. Yeah. You know, I have no problem with footballers if they really want to make gestures in support uh, of opposing racism. We all oppose racism. If they want to do something, if they must, if they think that's going to make the world a better place or in any way affect the p- problem of racism, by by all means, go ahead, take a knee, whatever you want to do, uh, but do not affiliate it to Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, as is always being said, is an extremist political organisation that stands for smashing capitalism, destroying the nuclear family and defunding mm. the police. That's what... He's he- trying to make out that's not what it is, though, isn't it? Well, but mm. it is. It is, as I say, by all means, if you must virtue signal about your opposition to racism, do so. But not to Black Lives yeah. Matter. What we are seeing is professional footballers groveling on their knees to a ludicrous political organisation from America. Why are they doing yeah. it? And why doesn't Gareth Southgate, who's supposed to be the intelligent man of football, one of football's thinkers, uh, why doesn't he understand that? I mean, usually if you're very intelligent in football, it means you nearly pass your 11 plus and that's about it. Uh, and Gareth Southgate's no exception. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, well, Gareth Southgate... Two fingers stick, sticking two fingers up to the fans as well. Yeah, which is, it tells you, know, you it was exactly. Only, when was it? Uh, we were arguing about the Super League, right? Mm. And everyone was being mm. told, "Oh, but the fans are important. The fans mm. are make make the game. You know, you can't betray the fans." Yeah. Yeah. And UEFA, of course, who have now uh, decided to step in and fine uh, tw- the, the countries that wanted to, or the clubs that wanted to join that twenty million mm. quid so they get more money yeah. in. But you know, the fans apparently don't matter. Uh, in the uh, and, and it shows you exactly what they think of those fans as well because they're willing to extend the latitude to the players and say, oh, they're taking the knee, but it's to do with ra- racism, it's not to do with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. But they're not willing to extend the same latitude to the 
to the fans exactly. right. who they think, oh, well, they're booing, so they must just be these racist problems. Right. Right. That's yeah. exactly right. That, 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 if you like, and I think the players are most, the vast majority of the players are doing it just because they're told to do it. Because, you know, as I always say, you know, in, in the end, this is to support George Floyd uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, those footballers couldn't point to well, Minneapolis. Well, I mean, they say, yeah, I mean, they say, the, to be fair the to map. them, though, they, they have tried to explain that that's not what they're doing it yeah, for. Well, they're they're trying, well, because they've, so no, because they've moved it. Again, the goalpost being moved all the time. They started off by saying it was about, um, you know, recognition of the fact that there's racial injustice. Now it's about all injustice, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about racial yeah, injustice. Yeah. It's about the injustice that goes on in the world. Well, I'm sorry. I don't care whether footballers think there's injustice going on in the world. You know, they they've all don't. got Bentleys, they you know. Of course there's yeah. injustice. They they all they have and, to if do. You, and if you want to make a statement, do what Wilfred Zaha suggested yeah. and stand up or, or do something well, like linking I mean, I was very disappointed with Scotland because this time last week, do you remember Scotland up had said racism. that they were going to stand up against racism. They then got leaned on, presumably mm. by the political masters of, mm. of the FA and the Scottish FA and possibly the government mm. um, and then they came out and said well we're going to stand against racism uh, for the games in Scotland but when they come to England in well, solidarity when they play, with the England when they play England, when, yeah. when they when they play England they're going to stand in solidarity with England yeah well we won't have to worry too much about uh, Scotland's gestures for very long will we uh, I was going to nominate well, the, the Scottish goalkeeper I was going to say like David Marshall uh, but, for, but for famously saying... apart from like one decent Scottish goalkeeper they haven't really had great history yeah. of goalkeeper yeah, so, but, but a good idea if you're the goalkeeper is stand between the posts mm. don't go and stand in the centre circle yes. uh, so David Marshall could have been a plank of the week but I feel kind of sorry for him not having a very good Euros. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about uh, the players taking the knee mm. uh, and Gareth Southgate's blind support of it which is massively divisive and, and when the fans boo uh, that is an expression of their freedom of expression. Yes. Uh, they have a, it's a freedom of speech issue so they must not be condemned. They have every right to boo that gesture if they want uh, uh, and the other thing I wanted to say about it which isn't really Gareth Southgate's fault but I... Also I know by, sorry to interrupt you, but I noticed that you know that we've got this, this new kind of you know, world in which we live. You're not supposed to be disrespectful to anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Were they not booing the Croatian players when they got the ball? Because I thought that's what I could hear, um, and that, that that quite often happens. But isn't that being disrespectful to the Croatian well, players? Well, why yeah, they, but who why, cares? Well, who I cares? don't care. But if you're gonna uh, you're gonna be sanctimonious about people booing, well, I suppose that's surely you should say don't boo the, the opposition. You always, you always like, boo the opposition of course when you they do. get the ball. But that's but my that's, point, that's Kevin. A sporting but that's issue. my point. People boo all well, the that's time. A sporting issue. You can't tell. No, but the point is you can't tell the fans not well, to boo. Yeah, of course you can't. If you let them boo, interestingly, they also allowed. He didn't. He didn't say anything about the fans. Who cheered yeah. after they after some of the other fans booed? Yeah. So he said that he, he so was happy right to, to allow the the footballers to make mm. the decision if they wanted to take the knee or mm. stand up or whatever gesture they wanted mm. to make, um, but didn't complain that you know it's not that the fans are yeah. just not allowed to make a sound. They're only allowed to cheer. They're not allowed right. to boo. Exactly. If you're going to allow the players to take the knee or to make any kind of gesture mm. that they wanted to have their mm -hmm. freedom of expression, you have to allow the fans to be able to express themselves if they want to cheer or if they want to yeah. boo. And the la last thing to say about this. Uh, was Again, this isn't quite Gareth Southgate's fault, but I blame him for persisting with this ludicrous ritual which has been so divisive and cast a shadow over the Euros. He should have just said, all right, we won't do it, or yeah. we'll do it to or kick we'll it do out. A different thing. We'll do it to kick yeah. it out, not to Black Lives yeah. Matter. It's quite easy to get out of, but he has, obviously hasn't got the intellectual mm -hmm. capacity no. to do it. But when that moment unfolded, the thing that everybody had been talking about all week, the big story, uh, England would take the knee, uh, would the fans boo. England took the knee for about three nanoseconds and stood <laughs> It straight. was very quick. Yeah, yeah. It? And, and, and then, I thought it was quicker than <laughs> yeah, normal. And then, and, oh, they did it really quickly. Yeah. They were obviously told, get, get it rid was of that. A it was a genuflection, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't, you know. And then, and then. Uh, I remember those days. And, and then the fans booed. And this uh, iconic moment that people have been, took this big news story. Yes, they did take the knee. Yes, they did boo. Uh, BBC commentary team did not say a damn word. They didn't mm. notice, or they didn't note. Oh, they noticed. They, they, they noticed, but <laughs> they, they didn't noticed. note that this huge story was unfolding. They just let it happen. That is news censorship by our state broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Absolutely outrageous. Well, the BBC may get another mention later on. Uh, Emil, who's your second one? Stalin's nanny, Susan Mitchie? Susan Mitchie? Mitchie? I think she might be Mickey. Uh, either way, I don't care if you mispronounce <laughs> Mitchie it. Mitchie the lefty. Yeah. Yeah. So she is a, a member of Sage, yes. who went on Channel 5 and when asked how long she thought that the, the 
measures should go on, lockdown measures, wearing a mask and, and surface hygiene and things like that. She said, forever. Um, and <laughs> she said... <laughs> I mean, we're um, laughing, but I mean, these are the people running the country. Yeah, she, had sort of, she had a sort of smirk on her yeah. face where she knew that at that exact moment that she was showing all of her cards. And she, she used to be referred to, apparently, when she was at Oxford University, she used to be referred to as Stalin's nanny. Did she? Her brother apparently was a, a really close friend of right. uh, Seamus Milne. Okay. Um, and Gets worse. So, and she is, she's a long-term member of the Communist yeah. Party. So hardly surprising no. that she and has such a heavy-handed right. approach to public health. And she's also a behavioural scientist, isn't she? Well, so she has which is no, very she's sinister. Not. She's a behavioral psychi psychiatrist. She's a psychiatrist. Yeah, but I think she's behavioral. No, definitely. she's not. She's a psychiatrist. Sure? That's all she is. Okay. These but people anyway, aren't even qualified. It's very to be sinister. On well, they're not qualified to do anything other than advise the government about what people are likely to think and what they're likely to do. Well, how the hell does she and what know? What was really interesting was that she said that she didn't think that it would be much, it wouldn't be a big deal for us to change our behaviour in these little ways, like as you check your pocket for your keys and your phone before you leave, that you'll check if you've got your mask there as well. She said she compared it to wearing seat belts and picking up dog yes. poo in the park. Yeah. She said that um, it would help with other diseases as well but then she said the next thing around the corner is environmental disaster. Yeah. So we're yeah. going in the direction so, of climate change as we But this predicted. is my point, you know, this is why we have to make sure that we put some kind of stopper into the into the dam because otherwise these people won't mm. give up. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll be there trying to do be they'll, they'll have There'll so always much be success another disease. with this that they will think they can do anything they want. Uh, so mm -hmm. put the case that uh, this lifelong devoted member of the Communist Party is proposing plans that would destabilise capitalist Britain. Mm. Uh, what on earth is a staunch communist doing on this important government advisory mm -hmm. board? It's an outrage. I know, it really is. And I mean, I'd love to know what she was doing before this particular incarnation on stage, because I don't really know. I'm assuming she was just some sort of, you know, slightly um, foggy um, academic who was occasionally asked to write something for a newspaper or come up with some kind of study or do some kind of paper for, for a, you know, a psychiatric mm -hmm. conference or something. But I wonder what she's been doing for her entire career to give her the right to be sitting on this committee telling us all how to live. It's interesting as well if you remember when Neil Ferguson said that, yeah. they, that they hadn't thought that the, that the uh, people of this country would behave in as a compl in, in as a compliant mm, way yeah. as pe people in right. Asian countries, and they were surprised, and they were they? pleasantly surprised yeah. that w once they you know dipped their toe in and tested the waters, that we were all right. so compliant. And he's but the guy who literally has got nothing right in his entire career. Yeah. Every single prediction he's made hasn't come true. It's pretty good between the sheets. Well, according to his <laughs> German uh, lover, but I don't yeah. know whether that's still going on. Uh, but yeah, Boris Johnson said that. He's good enough to get on the Radio 4 Today programme about once a week. They <laughs> always get him on. I know. Boris Johnson said that about. He said that. Uh, He'd learnt uh, that the British people were surprisingly easy. It was surprisingly easy to take freedom away mm. from the British people. Much more uh, easy than he'd thought. But mm. it's very difficult to give it back mm -hmm. to them. Well, he doesn't want to give it back. Clearly. Well, he's not giving them back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, I mean, which brings me to the G7, because um, you mentioned it earlier on when we were talking about Boris Johnson. All of these people, that struck me when I was watching them at the weekend, you know, from Macron to, uh, to von der Leyen to uh, Joe Biden, they're all paid by us, right? Every single one of them. We bankroll everything that they do. You know, their salaries are paid by us. Uh, Air Force One is paid for by the American taxpayer. You know, every single taxpayer in the world was paying for that jolly down in Carbis Bay, which turns out to be some kind of childhood holiday destination that Stanley Boris, Boris and yeah. Stanley used to go to, or Stanley used to go to. I mean, Take the kids, it's yeah. all a bit kind of twee, you know? And, and I just thought to myself, watching them, all cavorting around with one another without a care in the world. They clearly, as I said, were not concerned about getting COVID. They weren't concerned about spreading COVID. They were concerned about looking like they're all having a fabulous time. The proles time. in the background with their masks yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, all the other people. Yeah, but they weren't. They wearing, didn't have masks on. Yeah, they, but they didn't have masks only, on. Only the people they, who were serving. You know, they they, they were shaking hands, they hugging. A, they were hugging, arms around each other. See how close Macron and, yeah. and Biden were yeah. almost embracing. Yeah. Well, they did. Yeah, they did. But, you know, it just I found it quite sickening watching them all, really. And I, I don't really know what the G7... Uh, is for and on this particular occasion this meeting I don't think anything actually came mm. out of it at all yeah. I don't remember there the, being other than the fact that Biden the... is the Queen reminds Biden of his mother that was the main yeah, thing well, that she seems must to have come out so the Queen's 193 years old <laughs> she, for God's sake. well I said to somebody the other day um, you know the Queen's the oldest person Biden's met yeah. uh, he's never met anybody older than himself well, the, Queen, <laughs> you know. the Queen was thrilled to meet someone younger than yeah her, absolutely yeah. right but you know I just find it sort of you know, the kind of lot, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm all for laughing and joking, I'm all for having fun, but this is not really the time, you know? It's a You're bad all, look. They've all flown in on private jets to tell us about saving the climate. Yeah. One. Yeah. Two, 
uh, they go out and they go to the Eden Project and all pretend to care about the environment. When, you know, everybody knows America is probably the biggest polluter in the entire world. It ain't going to change any time soon. I mean, I think Joe Biden I think thinks... it's the third biggest He thinks He thinks that, um, you know, Americans are going to give up their cars. Really? I mean, <laughs> Kevin and I both lived there. They ain't giving up their cars. <laughs> you know, any, any sooner they're Petrol giving up their... and beer. Their, 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 Petrol and, and beer. Guns, and you guns. never touch that in America. <laughs> you know, they're not going to give up their, their guns either. Um, you know, they're not going to change just because Joe Biden thinks they should. And, you know, I just don't understand. I mean, they didn't even really come out with much of a declaration on all of that. look at them. Look at them. They all, uh, particularly Joe Biden, who flew from London uh, to Cornwall and then back uh, from Cornwall to London to meet the Queen yeah. on that massive, on Air Force on massive great Air Force One while lecturing us about climate yeah. change. Someone needs to Go do a calculation on that. Go shove it, you no, old no. hypocrite. I know, exactly. But also, how much money did it cost? I think mean, there's 6,000 police down there, right? who were all living on a cruise ship, yeah. which was parked off to the coast. Normally, they have 20 in Carbis Bay. Mm. 6,000 yeah. police. Great for the ocean. And I mean, we're all, we're all being told how uh, awful it is to, uh, to try and give the uh, police any work to do because there aren't mm. enough of them. Well, they found 6,000 of them to go to Carbis Bay and Cornwall. Mind you, they did get seriously punished for that barbecue on the beach. They were regaled by a concert of sea shanties. <laughs> 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 a cruel and unusual punishment. Yes, absolutely right. <laughs> But I, I, just, I just think, you know, if we are to, to, to move into a new era, which some people want us to do, I think we have to give up on these ridiculous conferences, don't we? What is the point of the G7? Couldn't they have just zoomed in like well, the rest of, of they us? Could. Well, of course they could. Even if they didn't zoom in, I mean, it was clearly all it was was a very expensive photo opportunity. Well, Carrie was having a good time. She, she loved loving it. it, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. I mean, she couldn't rent dresses quick enough. I mean, does I don't she know. Own you can ask clothes. Does she hire but, all her well, clothes? Apparently, I would assume that the reason she's doing it is because one, she's trying to big up some designer friends of hers so that she can wear more dresses that they can then sell to other people. But I presume it must be some kind of sustainability. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That, that's thing, the new thing that, that you now rent your clothes. Well, all, all political women, in particular, now are going to turn up in rented clothes. So they cannot mm. be castigated for wearing a, a six thousand right. pound dress. What are they trying to do? Offset their carbon emissions exactly. by well, all presumably. of them flying it's the there. New well, way I mean, to signal a, your there's, a, there's an app I think that I've seen an advert for recently, which is all about uh, reusing clothes. And so, what happens when you get yeah. tired of the clothes you've got mm. is you share them with other people. And so, it's all sustainable and it's all sharing and it's all <laughs> lovely. And I'm going, that's great. And just when you walk out the door, somebody stabs you yeah. uh, because there's not enough police to police it. <laughs> it's the so new never mind the night out anyway. Sartorial virtue signal. It really is. The new so the G7 yeah. for me, uh, all of them, the whole kit and caboodle. So you're number three, Kevin. Uh, my number three is uh, our old friend Keir Starmer. Oh, yes. Uh, obviously, He's I could. He's doing well this time. Uh, yeah, I could say. Uh, it's because he continues his extraordinary way of uh, being Her Majesty's uh, leader of the opposition uh, by supporting Boris all the way. <laughs> I mean, everything Boris ever does, the only opposition he gets is from his own MPs. Yeah. But Al oh, Keir goes, right, oh, yes, we're it. right behind you on yeah. that one. You yep, should have yep, done yep. that last week, though. It's just hopeless, hopeless. But that isn't why I'm going to uh, pinpoint uh, Keir this week. Uh, it's uh, for his extraordinary declaration uh, that it's time that Colin Pitchfork the uh, double rapist murderer of schoolgirls mm. uh, who's been in jail for 33 years uh, should now be released uh, in tune, showing how what the great empathy that Keir has with the people yes. of this country. This guy murdered and raped two 15-year-old schoolgirls mm. in the woods. Three years mm. apart, by yeah, the way, so yeah, it wasn't yeah. as if it was a yeah. one-off yeah. kind of And he had his young madness. child on the front seat of the car, apparently, yeah. while he was doing well, this. Well, exactly. Huh. So, so there Just are some the people, Keir, he says, it's got to be released sometimes. I say, no. 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 Mm. This, is he, this is him speaking uh, yeah. in his capacity as former director of public yeah, prosecutions. Yeah, 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 it's no wonder the legal system in this country yeah, is yeah. absolutely I wonder screwed. whether he's lining himself up to, to later to criticise the policing, this new um, sentencing and policing bill. Mm. Yeah. Because one of the uh, proposals in, in that draft bill is that for people who murder children or commit multiple murders, they'll have a, um, what is a, a real-life sentence mm. rather than just, you know... Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, one of the complications, I guess, of this case is because he was sentenced when he was sentenced, he apparently couldn't be sentenced in the way that he would be now. So if it mm -hmm. was now, he wouldn't be let out. But, you know, 
they can make an, a, a change to that it's when they feel like it. Because remember, John Wall boys. Yeah. You know, this is the same situation. Well, no, so was, he was about to be released well, on parole until there was a judicial review. So they could easily well, do it the same. Well, it wasn't that. They, 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 the parole board decided to release uh, John Wall boys, mm. and there was a massive public storm. You mm. can't let this guy yeah. out. Uh, and we, the public, were informed by the parole board. They literally said this. Uh, I'm afraid uh, this is our decision, and uh, you have no right to know the reasons we reached this decision. Amazing. And there was a massive storm, and they had to change the law uh, that parole board decisions could now be challenged, and they had mm -hmm. to tell us why they'd made decisions. Mm. So they've decided he should be released. Uh, there will be a massive storm. There already is a massive mm. storm. I predict he won't be. Uh, and what Keir Starmer and all his legal mates have got to realise is there are some people, lock them up and throw the key away. Don't exactly let this right. guy out. But this is almost like Sir Keir Starmer is on this relentless kind of quest to make himself even more unpopular yeah, every single mm -hmm. week. Sure. Every single week he loses about two points, yeah. right? He'll lose another two points next week uh, until he just gets so yeah. far away from... Extraordinary from lack Johnson of empathy the with the people. Yeah. Extraordinary lack of understanding yeah. and he, what people He used think. to head up the CPS as well, the Crown Prosecution well, this is, Service. I think this is so how it's, he's, yeah. it just goes to show how unbelievably out of touch people in the legal mm. profession well, are Well, this is what I'm saying. This is how we get people. these problems yeah, yeah. because, you know, you can imagine um, if they were to start saying that we should be releasing people like Huntley, mm. you know, because mm -hmm. he served his time. And there are people, I mean, I used to talk to them all the time. I've more or less given up talking to people like the Howard Lee for penal reform because all they talk about is letting people out of prison. But it's strange. Have no isn't it? care about the victims. It's yeah. strange that they they talk about him having been, you know, on these courses and that he is ready for release. But it's not about him. It's mm. about justice. Mm. It's about the girls who were murdered, not about whether he's ready to come out or not. Well, that their families are still alive. You know, it, this is a, it's an outrage. Yeah. And, and, and their uh, families have already spoken out and said how terrible this is yeah, going to yeah, be yeah, for yeah, them because yeah. it's going to bring it all back. And Thirty he's years is really around. not a great deal of time for two years. Thirty-three years he should just stay there. And, and Keir Starmer, as a politician, as a leading politician should understand, you know, if that's what he really thinks, this guy should be let out, just keep quiet yeah. about it, Keir, because it's also, not going to do you, you any know, good. Let's, let, you know, we can't rehearse all of the arguments, obviously, here, but, you know, in the end, of what benefit is releasing this guy I to know, anyone, exactly. apart from to him? Exactly. He's the only one that's benefiting. Nobody else is. Exactly. He's still capable of committing those crimes again. Yeah. He's not, as far as I'm concerned, safe, because I don't believe do you know, if you do can know, do that. You know that, what he is? He's, six, he's 61 years yeah. old. That means sexually active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy will be a clear and present danger. Definitely. And, and it's no wonder, backing the release of the likes of Colin Pitchfork, that Keir Starmer is now officially, in terms of the polls, less su successful and less supported mm. as Labour leader than Jeremy mm -hmm. Corbyn. He's worse, it's amazing, officially it's quite, worse it's quite than an Corbyn. Though, what so are they doing with that? Him. Get rid of him. Yeah. Get rid Angela of him. Angela Rayner, of course, is not much better. I mean, she popping up on your earlier Gareth Southgate argument, she also issued a statement, didn't she, yeah. saying that all people who boo uh, the players of taking the knee are racist. Yeah. I mean, that was it. Yeah. There was no room it's for any sort true, of nuance, no room for the any party argument. Of the people. It's definitely the party <laughs> of the people. You're kind of going... That'll be why yeah, they, people don't vote these for you. Are your, these are your voters, Keir and Angela, that you're calling racists. These are Labour voters, uh, potentially, on the terraces, mm -hmm. that you say you're racist if you booed uh, footballers grovelling to Black Lives Matter. No, they're not. You just mm. know not. that if, if the players linked arms in opposition to discrimination, yeah. then the players would not boo. They would not because be any booing. Because it's not associated no, with Black no. Lives Matter. It would be absolutely fine, they, because that's what Millwall did, and that's what happened. They, they didn't boo. These idiots, uh, Starmer... Rainer and the likes thereof, they cannot divorce themselves from their addiction to identity politics. Mm -hmm. Identity politics means nothing to those guys on the terraces. It means nothing to the people in the red wall states, uh, uh, um, uh, constituencies, uh, and yet on they go. Don't mm -hmm. boo, don't boo, t you know, identity, be kind. culture wars, be kind. the trends. Be kind. You know, they are, it's <laughs> just useless. I know. Useless. So, Emma, your third one? My third is Comedy Central. Oh, yes. Um, I imagine that this is probably not as well known as the other planks <laughs> this week. No, um, this is definitely coming from slightly left field, I would say. So what you might call a minority <laughs> good, good thing channel. Too, good thing too. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there is a, a lady called Thania Moore, who yeah. is apparently a comedian, I've never heard of her, um, who she did this quiz on Comedy Central, yes. this sort of skit about Dominic Cummings and Boris Johnson and how Bo Dominic Cummings had made this statement saying that it was absolutely crackers mm. that um, Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings were in the positions yeah. that they were in during the pandemic. Uh, she then went on to say that she thought that 
it were that him using the phrase she said something along the lines of a cracker using the term crackers make drives her to talk crackers, about another cracker like yeah that. cracker of course is the word they use really in america more than here isn't it for white for white people in the south yeah so it was a kind very of generally kind it's of a racist of, term it would it would definitely be a racist term in america it for was sure. it was a very very strange little skit and then she went on to do this quiz hmm. um that was entitled how white man are you man um how so, hilarious I thought I would test you Why not, on indeed. some of the questions that she this asked. This Comedy Central channel goes out on sort of what? Free, well, it's not a free view, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's got its own is channel. It? Yeah. I don't yeah. think I've, I mean, I've seen Comedy Central in it's America. There. I've never seen it here. No, it's there. It was a very, it's very, there. very strange skit. And they had um, these women at the end blowing sort of, you know, the sort of party horn things oh, yes. and trying to do party poppers and looking like they were all sort of stupid. It was a very, very strange Very weird. I mean, imagine if you pr sketch. proposed doing that except not about white people. <laughs> it, it just wasn't comedy. No. But it, it was just, I mean, she was saying that, it, she, that Dominic Cummings, because of what he'd said, was it was the most she'd ever been attracted to a white mm. man. Um, uh. Very, very odd. Anyway, so she, uh, in, in How White Man Are You Man, yes. she asked, um, amongst the questions were, do you walk into a room and feel like you belong in that room and should be leading that room? Yes. Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All the time. 100%. All the time. Do you look at a picture of Jesus and instantly recognise similarities between the two of you? No, not in that case. <laughs> what about you, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. All the time. Very much. Yes. <laughs> um, it's the glasses. Like, this, is, this is definitely one for the two of you. Um, are you likely to throw up if you hear the words woke, identity politics, political correctness, diversity and equality? Yes. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't make me sick. Yes. It just annoys me. No, no, no. I, I could easily throw up. Really. <laughs> if I got all those words at once, I definitely would puke. Do you find uh, that hoodies are threatening, intimidating, and potentially a weapon of mass destruction? No, I find uh, them no. boring. Yeah, boring and very hot as well. <laughs> Do you have a problem with Russians that you can't really explain? No. Uh, no, I don't, fully enough. No. Why Russians? Because Where's Trump, that coming from? Trump, isn't it? Oh, okay. Oh, so is you're meant to be some kind of Trump thing? supporting sure. white Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a jibe at Trump. It's a bit a generalisation this issue. You to tell Thania that uh, Donald Trump isn't the president anymore. Maybe she'll get on board at some point. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and do you think that Eminem is the greatest rapper of all time? Uh, he's pretty good, but I wouldn't say so. Uh, but I don't really have a view. Obviously Kanye is the greatest rapper yeah. of all time. I don't I really agree. have a view. I do think uh, Eminem is best. <laughs> but, I mean, You're this very is the other white thing. man, man. But this is the other thing, right, that, that I well, mentioned. I think Tiger Wolf's when we were Tiger talking, Woods is really When we were talking golfer. about the G7 earlier on, um, you know, David Attenborough goes to, um, you know, to, to, to preach to them about how the world is coming to an end. And he and Joe Biden together, collectively, almost 200 years old. Right? Years <laughs> but those are the two old white men who are apparently okay. It's mm. all right to like them, but, of course, if you're any kind of other old white man like Donald Trump, uh, that's not allowed. But so right. there's so a bit the of a suggestion, the on. suggestion, by the way, in this was that the, 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 what what is wrong with our politics? Yeah. The problem it is white men. Yeah. So it was another one of these kind of like mash report Nish yes. Kumar style comedy oh, yeah. sketches, which is just about I sort of political posturing. I remember when he posturing. used to have a job. Mm. He doesn't have one anymore, does he? <laughs> Do you know the G7? Just one, one uh, random point. What do they call it, the G7, when there, there, there was loads of other world leaders there as well? The South African leader turned up, the guy from South Korea. Well, it's a bit like the Eurovision uh, Song Contest. You, know, you, you name know. it, they were there. Yeah, but it's like the Eurovision. The Lion. You know, yeah. European well, Union is not in the country. Eurovision Song Contest. Australia yeah. in it as well. Uh, Australia got kicked out this year. Oh, did they? Yeah. So, but you can have anyone you want, I think. That's the point. You know, the European Union isn't even a country. Yeah, but Eurovision, you'd allow a kind of relaxation of the rules without really bothering to care very mm. much. But you're allowed to invite well, your mates to the Why call it the G7 well, I think, if I think, 10 other I think leaders if you're the don't. host, you're allowed to... I think the reasoning they, they had was that they wanted to invite countries that they wanted to do some trade deals with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So presumably, you know, that's why they did it. But we haven't had a South African trade deal announced. Have we? We've just had an Australian well, Australia one. Australian one. Although yeah. they haven't really announced it. They've done this thing where they've gone, oh, yeah, we've got a trade deal. Uh, what's in it? We haven't done that yet. Yeah, we've we had, done that had dinner. We've like just it. basically had dinner and said, "Do you fancy doing a trade deal?" <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, great. That's it then. We've got a trade deal. They hammered it out, out over dinner. Over the turbot. Night. Yeah. Turbot, presumably. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go back um, for mine to um, the BBC. Yeah. Uh, not for all of the reasons we've already mentioned them. Not because of uh, Lord Hall. Not because of Martin Bashir. Not because of their uselessness in all sorts of other ways. But because of the football and their coverage of uh, the Euros. Christian Eriksen. Uh, well, that I wasn't actually watching at the time. We were sitting in the garden. But my son came downstairs and said, "Have you seen what's happened to Christian Eriksen?" I was like, "No." So we went inside and it was like, "Oh my God!" You know. And obviously he had this cardiac arrest. Thought he was dead. Didn't yeah. He, at that point. And and he was on the on the pitch and you know the cameras were on him. 
And later, the BBC had to issue an apology because what they didn't do, which many other countries who were covering the same game did do, was they pulled the, the camera off not only showing a close-up of Christian Eriksen, who was clearly in some difficulty, possibly unconscious, possibly <laughs> dead, for all you knew. With CPR. Um, being, 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 having CPR um, you know, uh, committed uh, on him. And then cutting to his wife, that inexplicably, was awful. who was naturally very distraught and in tears, and leaving the camera to linger. Now, you know, it's all very well for them to say, oh, we were taking the UA for feed, so there wasn't anything we could do. Absolute rubbish. Of mm -hmm. course there was something they could do. They could have cut Pull the, the feed and gone back to the studio. It's not as if they didn't have Which anybody else to talk to. Which is what the other countries did yeah. in yeah. their But they've their also coverage. got some very highly paid people, including Gary Lineker uh, and Alan Shearer, and I guess um, uh, Rhea Ferdinand was there, I think, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Yeah. Um, and you just kind of go, well, why wouldn't you actually just immediately mm -hmm. look at that and say, look, we better leave this because, you know... Somebody made a very bad decision. Somebody made a very bad decision. My belief is that they're frightened of telling Gary Lineker what to do because he's now so powerful that nobody probably gives him any kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, any any kind of... No, nobody goes near him just in case he gets annoyed with them. You know, and that's the sense it's I get. It's strange, isn't it? It's part of our sort of, um, like people filming incidents on their phones yes. it's a sort of like sinister spectator culture where we you know you want to see the the wife yeah. crying and they don't they're so desensitized to it yeah. they don't think oh this is something that we shouldn't be yeah we shouldn't i mean be i'm not one of those who said because there were some um sort of crazies on the left who wanted people fired wanted the cameraman fired for filming you know if you're at a live event Over and you're a journalist you know I don't blame the people for filming it, mm. but you've got an editing process which is supposed to, you know, override that so that you've got the footage if mm -hmm. you wish to have it, but normal common sense and taste and decency yeah. would say you're not actually going to run that live. You mm -hmm. really just shouldn't um, be doing it. That was it. the weirdest thing because the, there was still the commentary team there and by then I think uh, Gary and the gang were also adding their thoughts, yeah. not not in, uh, on sh in shots, mm -hmm. but they were talking about it. And... Uh, they were sort of saying, oh, well, there's a terrible atmosphere now. Uh, the, the, and, and, and I was watching it and I said, that guy's getting CPR. Yeah. That you could see him, yeah. you know, and, and you thought, what, my God, if they're not careful, millions of people are going to witch, witness a man mm. die yeah. live on TV. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, well, the one slack I'd cut the BBC uh, to some extent is somebody in charge thought, this is a, an astonishing unfolding drama. And in the heat of the moment, they made the decision to stick with it. Mm. It was a wrong uh, decision. When it cut back to Gary Lineker and the gang, they were completely overwhelmed, yeah. completely unable to deal with it. Right. So much so that within five minutes, they just went, well, that's the end of the game. We're off. Yeah. And it ended. And then they had to go back. You, yeah. know, when, you know when they so they resumed yeah. the game? They panicked. When, when, they resu when they resumed the game, the yeah. commentary team has obviously gone to the bar or something. And it, the commentary uh, was a couple of technical, technical guys. Oh, was it? They go, you better start doing it. So they go, well, the Danish guy's got the mm. ball now, and I think it's gone on to Finland but this now. Is where <laughs> I find, this is where I find it's uh, sort of rather um, invidious, because you've got the BBC paying these people a fortune to be journalists, effectively, mm. to be presenters. Mm -hmm. But then when they are presented with something which they find a bit uncomfortable, mm. they're not journalists yeah. anymore. They're people who can't do it. And yeah. they go, oh, my God, we can't talk about this. This is too But it goes difficult. back to the point about Bashir, which yeah. is the, the BBC have obviously lost a sense of ethical perspective. Mm. Uh, with that, with the, the, the things that they choose to cover and choose, or more importantly, choose not to cover, or in this case, not instantly realising that it was totally tasteless mm. to continue filming mm. that and then to go right. and start filming his distraught wife being comforted by their team captain. Um, you know, you would think that instinctively, yeah. as any viewer would instinctively think, is, oh, my God, you should not be filming this. Yes, absolutely right. And, and again, their excuse and their apology was not quite the full ticket because they claimed that they were just taking the feed as if that's an excuse. Yeah, it's not. Because all the other countries cut it off. Yeah. And, and uh, Ian Wright. Uh, Ian Wright, who works for ITV he, on yeah, this Yeah, he, he, uh, he tweeted... Cut to studio yeah. FFS yes. mm. <laughs> exclamation mark. You know? Well, well you can still you can still choose to if, if you're using someone else's feed, you can still choose to stop using it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, well this is what everybody else did. Yeah. It's a central pool. It's That's not, the point. You know, but yeah. you know, decisions were were not made that should have been made. Mm. Well, and, yeah. and I think what and I said this actually the weekend that if they haven't got some kind of protocol for this kind of thing, yeah. they need to get one. Yeah. Because yeah. if you've got a director or a producer 
who doesn't know how to make that decision. You should give them a piece of paper that says, if this happens, you do that. Mm. And, yeah. and if they haven't got that, I'd be astonished. As I said earlier, the other decision that they'd obviously made prior to the occasion was, we will not mention the fans booing, yeah. taking the knee, right. uh, which is outrageous news censorship mm. by mm. our increasingly dictatorial state broadcaster yes. but doesn't that, have that its has its own moral matrix. Yeah, yeah. They've invented their own mm. moral system. They will, uh, in the end, you know, what will probably happen about this feed that they kept running uh, erroneously, uh, you know, deputy heads will roll, but they'll come up with mm. some sort of moral reason why it was okay. Mm. They 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 are uh, they sort of beatify themselves. They uh, they see themselves as always saintly and always yeah. in the right. No and matter what. Right, they're yeah. also always taking someone else's lead. So in that instance, they were taking Gareth Southgate's lead because he said that the players would just continue yeah, to take yeah, the yeah, knee yeah. and ignore the crowds yeah. and just keep going with it. Mm. So they obviously thought, well, you know, we'll the that, captain then. has said that, you so we'll just let them do it and we'll ignore it. Yeah. Do that. That's news. That's journalism. You can't do that. Now we haven't yet carried over from last week because obviously um, we do one. Uh, we, we've got nine now, which we will whittle down to three in a minute. I think I'm going to have to do Prince Harry again uh, because as much as uh, we try not to keep Meghan and Harry in every single week, today's story. I mean, <laughs> what's let's he face done it, now? Well, last ah, last ah, week the he Duke was, and Duchess of PR disasters. Last week, last week he was in because he said he was going on five months with paternity <laughs> leave, right? Parental leave, as five he calls it. Months? Five months parental For leave. What? Except on the first Lecturing day. Us. Except on the first <laughs> day of his parental leave. Um, he basically uh, decided to complain to the BBC <laughs> about the fact that they were now um, uh, going to be sued uh, by him and Megs uh, on the grounds that they'd done a story that wasn't true, which now turns out to be slightly not necessarily the case. Mm. This week, um, he's apparently, uh, he and um, he and Megs have been trying to get a meeting uh, with the woman who's the agent for the Pussycat Dolls, right, because uh, they did very well for what's her name, Scherzinger, Nicole Scherzinger, yeah. um, to, to, to get a, a yogurt commercial and various other commercial deals. <laughs> got her on to Strictly or got her on to... Um, so they, yeah. yeah, so they're now looking for more sponsorship so opportunities because they haven't made enough money yet from Spotify and Netflix. And so apparently no they think that... Whatsoever. Can you imagine if they start doing adverts? It's not bad, though, isn't it? Okay, you can imagine Megan doing one of those yogurt commercials. Have you, seen, sort of like have you ever seen the, uh, the burger video? that she did. <laughs> no. Have you not seen that? This you've got to see, I'll have to show it to you. Something she did for a, for, for a men's magazine some years back. You know, it was like something like, G, it wasn't GQ, but it's something a bit tackier than GQ. And she's literally wearing hot pants and hardly um, very, a very skimpy top. And she's very suggestively like she used to doing flipping deal or burgers no deal. and doing all this kind of you know stuff. And you're just kind of going, oh, God. Well, she, got... was, she was a hostess on the American Deal yeah. or No Deal. You know, oh, yeah. Si similar outfit. I mean, you know, we're not talking mm. about sort of Meryl Streep here and in you terms know, of her acting book, career. Her children's book, The Bench. Yes. Oh, uh, do the you know, reviews you know, for do that. You know, so apparently she, there's a suggestion she got a £500,000 advance for that. It's, it's 100 and 86 words. <laughs> oh, apparently someone said 30, that you could... 39 lines. Brilliant. Apparently you could write all of the words She's a, she uses in the book. Listen, the you vocabulary can't, is so listen, limited you, yeah, onto your You hands. can't have anything but admiration for her commercial activity. Yeah, yeah. Half a million you know. quid for, for 186 words. 186 words is about three paragraphs. Well, apparently as well it reads as Actually, if, if it's written for... That, right? I'd be literally on a boat off the coast yeah, exactly. of Monaco broadcasting yeah. from, uh, got to hand yeah, it to her, broadcasting actually, from Monte Carlo. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, she's very good at that. Queen but I just Grifter. think there are certain things that old Hazard should learn to stay away mm. from. And actually, another reason that's good to carry him over this week is because of the whole PR disaster surrounding the name Lilibet. Yes. Um, that they complained to the BBC, mm. and um, the B that the, the because the BBC source that was a palace source said that they hadn't asked the Queen for permission; mm. they'd simply informed her. Yeah. They then complained, threatening legal action yes. that they had um, defamed them by by reporting from this palace source, mm -hmm. um, and the palace, aka the Queen, has actually not come out saying mm. no my grandson is right yes. um so if, if if it is the case which i'm not i'm not sure if i think it is that lilibet was intended to be an olive branch mm. it is the worst most part of the sort of mixing of metaphors yeah. backfiring olive it branch is. that it they could no have possibly question. extended and i don't think it was anyway i mean i really don't i mean I don't you don't call somebody after your you know the, the queen of the uk's nickname i mean it's yeah. a very private she's sort of, eighth in line for the they throne could have as well. easily called her they could have it? called her lily they could have called her Elizabeth, mm -hmm. but Lily Bet is very personal to me. Also, they, they say always oh, is a clear libel, um, and it's which it is. It's arguable. 
you know, is, is it defamatory to say that uh, when naming a child after her great grandmother, you didn't uh, contact the grandmother first to ask her if, if you could name it after her nickname. Mm -hmm. Is that defamatory? Well, is, that, I mean, is that meant to well, defame the old... conflicting sources, it's, it's the, the old, duty of the press But they're, press saying, they're saying that, they, that you imply we're liars. Well, that's, I suppose, what they would say, and I suppose they would also that say is that you'd have to also show that there was some kind of reputational damage, which I'm yeah, not sure if, 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 if they can establish that the BBC was lying, uh, but they haven't it. asked for no. They haven't suggested that. They've suggested that well, they did Alice first, they didn't did. know. No, they did suggest that, that their, their, their uh, letter to the BBC said you've called us liars, and that is clearly defamatory. Well, no, the they've inferred that. But what I'm saying is that they haven't said the BBC was lying. They've said the BBC spoke to someone who didn't know that they'd spoken to the Queen. That's what they're but doing. But if they hadn't have sent the letter, no one would have noticed no, that the, there was a conflict said, there they, anyway. They actually say that, 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 that it's clearly defamatory to suggest that. that yes, that, no, I know that. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is, is they're not. That well, they're railing, railing back on it because the argument now revolves around uh, that there's a difference between asking yeah. uh, the Queen and telling. if we can name the kid after your childhood nickname or just telling. Or just doing it, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Just doing it, yeah. Okay. okay, right, so we've got nine. We need to get them down to three. Uh, so, why don't you pick your favourite one of Kevin's? Kevin, what are your three? Uh, my three were. Uh, Gareth Southgate. Yes. Um, it was uh, the Keir Starmer for yeah. uh, his Colin Pitchfork support, and Tony Hall, the Director General of the BBC. Mm. They're all pretty good. Oh, so. that's actually quite hard, isn't it? It's funny when you get to this point when you realise actually this is quite a tough competition. And this, you know, in recent times, it's really been quite close, quite a close call. Just toss up between Keir Starmer and Gareth Southgate. You don't like Tony Hall? I mean. I mean, I don't like Tony Hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think maybe uh, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Keir Starmer. Okay. okay. Well, do you know, he's raced up. Agree. He's raced <laughs> up the charts. That, that would be my least favourite of my three. He has raced Your up choice, the charts so lately. Okay, so um, shall I, uh, do you want to choose mine? Yeah, sure. Okay, so my three were, uh, of course, the BBC, the G7, and Chris Whitty. Um... Because Tony Hall got away with it in my th selection, uh, uh, and also because I think it's a very good choice by you, I'm going to go for the BBC, and we can incorporate everything about. Yes, their, and then that their, sort of captures yeah, it all, doesn't yeah. it? So that sort of gives you uh, Lord Hall as well. Yeah. Um, right. So um, you now need to pick. Uh, no, I need to pick yours, don't I? Uh, Boris Johnson. Yes. Susan, Mitchy, Mickey, Stalin's yes. nanny, or Comedy Central. I sort of want it to be Boris, really. Kind of has to be Boris, doesn't it? I think this might be the first time Boris and Keir Starmer have been in the top three. <laughs> but I think it has to be Boris because he's, he's taken our freedoms away. He's, he's had, oh, dangled them in front of us and then taken them away yeah. again. Plus all that other nonsense mm. about feminine gender neutrality. <laughs> I think it's got to be Boris. So we've got Boris Johnson, Sir Keir Starmer and the BBC. Very traditional planks yes. this week. So <laughs> who's it going to be for the number one? Uh, um... You know, I mean, I, I think given, for me, not my decision, of course, but for me, given the week we're going through and given what Boris has done, uh, what with not only building back neutral and building back feminine, uh, but also taking our freedoms away from another, it's got to be Boris, hasn't it, really? I think it I does. I think Boris as well. I think unanimous. I think he's the unanimous winner, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll give, um, I guess we'll give the BBC number two, shall we, just to split them up? Yeah. Start with number three. Yep, yeah. sure. I think that that's fits. Good. That's good. That's the sides of the playground. So list. congratulations. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, uh, you've managed to make a complete and utter uh, dog's breakfast, for want of a better <laughs> phrase, uh, of the economy, uh, of the reopening, uh, and of the now uh, treatment of the virus, which has almost disappeared. Boris Johnson, Plank of the Week. Well done. We'll see you next time.